Mediocre Hobbies Podcast, Episode 16, Season Finale, More 3D Printing. guys welcome back to the mediocre hobbies podcast episode 16 and the season one finale we are of course joined as always by my co-host tom landy hi hello sir how are you getting on not bad still in existential dread over twitter of course who isn't so it's a yeah. nightmare although sassy sassy elon musk replying to everyone is kind of make my week a little bit better but other than that it's fine yeah. um well yeah but uh yeah it's 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 good it's good um amazed we've done this now for four months and yes, we're going to do four it solid months for four more months next year i guess um we should tell everyone that next season as as, as I've, I've i've convinced everyone to call it internally here at, at mediocre uh, hobbies headquarters it, that's really hard to say actually <laughs> it, it, <laughs> is it, we're going to try and do lots of community interviews yes um so if we reach out to you please respond uh, preferably positively, not necessarily mandatory to that, but, but you know, yeah, dead, dead to us otherwise. Yeah, yeah, deleted um, from everything and stuff. So yeah, yeah, banned, removed. And if you know, if you subscribe to things like uh, Andy's Patreon, he's still going to take your money. Yeah, so, yeah, still get that, but you can't yeah, involve her. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so uh, really looking forward to to next next year and see what we do. But um, yeah, if anyone has anyone they'd like us to chat to, uh, maybe reach out. Sounds good. Now we're going to talk about 3D printing again because yeah. I still really haven't bought one. Yet. But yeah, it's it's the, that's the real reason we're finishing, so I can go and buy a 3D printer. A little bit shocked that it's been four months. Yeah, because it has been quick, quick yeah, time. But, yes, yes, it's it's it is weird how fast this whole thing moves. Um, the calendar. Can't. It's such a new idea. It's bizarre. Fucking lions. <laughs> <Pricks>. <laughs> <laughs> Making us accountable and stuff. Well, that's the worst. Yeah, uh, literally, I'm like <clears throat> just flicking, flicking back through the your channel, and I, I think the first week we spoke was like the week you did the Leviathan. Oh, jeez, that was decades ago, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Like, it's it's mad, mad to think that you've done like 600 videos since then, or at least it looks like 600 videos. At least 600, yeah. At least um, easily. Easily like two hundred and twenty-five videos or something now, in less than a year. That's mad, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> what's um what's what's your kind of plan for twenty twenty-three? Uh, my plan I, for twenty twenty-three. I know is it's to, more of the same, but like you know, it is indeed more of the same. But the twenty twenty-two was very much up. Build everything from the ground up. Mm. So I picked the strongest thing, which was forty k, to cling on to. Yep. So next year, hopefully, I'll be able to focus on doing some extra stuff um, and also i want to lean a little bit more into the 3d printing scene oh yeah um so like my goal is like i do four or five videos a week as it is i want at least one video a week to hit the 3d printing community oh wow so they can see that that is one of the, one of my passions like i'm printing all week again now what did, what did you print this week I printed a i'm in the middle of printing something that i can't talk about it's not um so you're doing, doing lots of 3d printing then Yes, uh, yes, I'm doing a video for another video for Arch Villain Games. Oh, cool! They like my first video, and they're having me do another video. Nice. They're paying me for this one, which is nice. Oh, awesome! So, um, yeah, and so that's I'm, the that was that the Squat Dreadnought when you did. Yes, yes, yeah. that was the first thing that I did for them. With their, you know, reaching out into their 40k or sorry, not 40k, their science fiction side yeah, of things yeah, now. Yeah. A lot of for some reason, a lot of 3D printing companies, you know, those ones that do subscriptions. Yes. They started with fantasy, which makes sense because they were aiming for the D and D. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, now yeah. a lot of like hobbyists are on there. So now they're all moving over and creating science fiction um kind of uh versions of them for their monthly pay. So they're now obviously in their second month of that. So I've got some files sent over from that. Amazing. And uh it's gonna be pretty cool. I have I have been like I don't, I don't like admitting it, but I have spent a lot of time this week watching videos on three D printing. Yeah, it's just amazing. It's um, yeah, it's not, it's not a hobby I want to have 
but it's a hobby I will have at some point. Yeah, yeah. See, nobody wants to 3D print. They just want yeah. the stuff that 3D printing gives them. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, I definitely, like, I, who was I watching? Luke from Geek Gaming Phoenix. Yeah. Um, I don't know, guys. Yeah, I like him. But he, he did a, he did some really good videos recently on, like, his Smaller 3D scale. printing setup. Yeah, yeah. And, like, one of the simple things is, you know, I don't know what you do for a curing station, but, like, he literally just got a, one of the IKEA shelves stuck the front door on it with a with a uv light stuck to the roof and that's it it cost yep. him like well the cost of a door and um the uv light which yep. is part of his existing shelving which is a genius idea but yep. it's also i didn't know you had to do that so <laughs> now i know yeah and that's the whole thing like when 3d printing was began it was like okay did you print something cool put on your window sill for half an hour cool it's yeah. good now. and now everyone's like convoluted machines to do it now i just bought a a nail technician light so yeah the, when you get the resin fingernail thingies and you put them mm -hmm. under the light to cure, I shall have them throw my prints under there for two or three minutes after I print them out, it's done. Um, so it's kind of as complicated as you want it. Like most companies now produce their own wash and cure station. Yes, yeah, they're quite so expensive though, aren't they? They're about 100 quid. Um, but uh, it just makes life easier. It's a self contained thing. Um, but it's about the size of another 3D printer. So yeah, 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 yeah. It's kind of out of one box into the other. Yeah, kind of. So. I've never bought one. I will buy one at some stage, I think. Um, well, hopefully someone will send you one. That'd be nice. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think that's the that's the trick, isn't it? Get Seems as much be. as you can. Seems and... to be. You just, just start you start working your ass off so you can afford things, and then they start sending you things for free. And then... Well, I mean, let's be fair. Please, you can send me stuff as well, people. Uh, I'll yeah. give you my address. It's no hassle. <laughs> um, like genuinely, just send me things. It's fine. Um, but I do, I do think like it's becoming much more i don't want to say affordable because i don't think 3d printing was ever that expensive but i Not think the whole when process we got into it like yeah it's like by the time it had gotten to the scale where you could produce something that was decent for a tabletop it had already broken down and wasn't like ten thousand euro machine kind of yeah job. um so i've certainly never seen anyone who does warhammer spend that much on one unless they are buying like 12k mad ones that are out now kind of thing like those people have money to burn um it seems yeah. To yeah i saw i saw a video the other day where a guy did a not a death core krieg army because obviously they're not death core krieg but they're very very similar sculpts yeah um really interesting models really simple i think he including the cost he paid for each of the stls i think he paid something like sixty dollars for the whole setup when you take it into account the he already had the printer and if you take away the 3d printer and setup it was like 400 quid total for a whole army yeah <clears throat> because i think it cost uh he i don't know how you have your setup but his was all set up in dollars so maybe that was just because his audience is uk or us centric but it was like one dollar for 10 of these imperial guard yeah Co uh, resin cost i mean uh, yeah, well, maybe it's about it's about thirty pound for one kilo of resin. That, seems, like that one, seems like a lot in terms of weight of resin for money. Uh, it's the, the the cost can build up faster than you think it can because mm. just like printing off rubbish. Um, one of the things that I always do to try and mitigate the wastage of resin is I never print off the crazy scenic bases that models come with. I was like yeah, making my yeah, own yeah. bases. So I don't make those because they're just a whole model's worth of resin again. Yes. Um, but uh, yeah, last year, like you probably get a hundred thirty-two millimeter models out of a kilo of resin. And do you do you go ahead and add um, many supports and stuff, or do you kind of just primarily All go with auto supported? Really, everything yeah. is auto supported these days. You just put it on the bed and hit slice, and then hit print. It's done. It's done. <laughs> it's finished. Like anyone who gives out about printers being difficult or having to add, something, you're wrong. Just put it on the bed and hit print. It, it knows what it's doing. And if, if your prints are failing, it's not because of the supports. You're doing something wrong. Your fat's dirty. Your resin's bad. It's not leveled properly. Like all the companies now that you buy 3D prints from, they come pre-supported. Somebody who does this as a job has already gone in and looked at those files and placed the supports. You're not going to do a better job than them. So one of the videos I watched, he was basically showing on a previously supported one uh, he doesn't have to do anything, but if he is working on one that's supported, there's a literally a, a piece of software that it does it automatically for you. 
Yeah. Um, you I'll just literally press one button and then he was like, you can also just go in and, you know, there was a way to kind of find the overhangs that are slightly more than whatever. Yeah. And he's literally like, I just click and add five or six more supports because it's cheaper to add the support than to do another Have print. Have fail. Yeah. 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 Correct. <clears throat> yeah. I tend to do a stupid raft because I'm paranoid. I haven't done a raft. So I bought a new printer this week just because, oh. you know, I was in what did you embarrassed. Get? I just bought the cheapest any cubic one on the market because my last any cubic one was there. I was like, maybe someone will start sending me them soon, so I'm not going to spend a fortune on it. So I bought the cheapest any cubic printer and a kilo of resin for 250 quid. Wow. Uh, so far, I've been printing away and had absolutely no fails. Everything was perfect. Um, so, yeah. It's nuts. I, I'm on Amazon looking at them right now, just to kind of... The Mono 4, 4K Mono? Yeah. Mono, yeah crazy wow i mean they're not expensive they're really no, not expensive they're really really not expensive anymore no okay interesting well i'm not buying one this side of christmas uh however <laughs> i'm looking at amazon every week i talk to you so <laughs> it's probably gonna happen at some stage it's cyber monday isn't it you get a deal uh, right no i don't want to spend I, 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 andy i'm li- so funny <laughs> who, anyone who cares and assuming i leave this in the show um, I've got two, I've got eight or ten uh, moving boxes sat next to me, so I can kind of start getting stuff tidied and prep for moving. So I am not absolutely not buying something that is the shape of a box to put in a box and keep in a box until I move somewhere. Where I can when open. is the move again? I don't know. I don't know when. That's the problem. So <clears throat> the our, our baby is due in April. So realistically, it'll be May at the earliest. However, uh, I don't know if I said this to you before, but they, um, where we're renting, the the uh, estate agent came around a few weeks ago just to casually do an inspection for the first time in like two years. And half the houses on the street are up for sale. So oh. I'm wondering if, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, Would you, I uh, just, I don't know whether this is a stupid question. Go on. Uh, would you not move and have the baby over there just for ease of being set up before she comes kind of thing? Yes. However, uh, my wife has been self-employed over here for since we moved and so has been paying Irish taxes. And so we'll get Irish maternity pay, which is significantly more than the UK. Ah, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So, yeah, I know. It's, I know. it's entirely stupid, but it is a legitimate reason. Um, all right. So on Amazon right now, I'm looking at one of these Anycubics for £229.99. Yeah, sounds like the one I bought. Madness. Yeah, that's how inexpensive 3D printing is these days. Yeah, 4K like, resolution. Do you, do you, you don't print anything that requires more than 4K, I assume. Well, it's they just go up a... to 6K and 8K with those ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've never seen that the value of a uh, um, 6k or 8k kind of thing like i think when companies i said this in a previous one i don't know whether you left it in or not but the idea of like you need a company that is like really big that has really really talented sculptors like people that went to college yeah and aren't just like artists who are really good they're not digging artists that are really like they're amazing you've seen the stuff that you can produce what what you're saying is when we get to a stage that there are games workshop figure sculptors designing them rather than mantic figure yeah. sculptors yes, designing them. yes There's you will notice wrong, the difference between AKers. nothing wrong yeah. with mantic things but they're not my favorite no none of the like i'm subscribed to loot studios yep very good stuff and science from fiction. What their stuff is unbelievable like yep. i mean 10 out of 10 amazing but they're they I would never tell six or eight k apart and uh i'm subscribed yep. to station forge um and i i'm like I said, couldn't tell. They do absolutely incredible stuff. They do a lot of that Krieg stuff as well. Yep. Um, and yeah, there's just, yeah, I couldn't tell if I did it on 4K or 6K or an 8K. Um, oh, wow. These Station Forge things are great. Yes, they are. They're beyond great. Oh, I like all these. Yeah, they came out with uh, a couple of months back. Like, I was still out of a printer. I didn't have a current working printer. And yep. one of their Patreon months was krieg mm-hmm. um like cavalry cavalry but they were on jet they were on motorcycles oh and i was that's... just like yes i'm subscribing to this right now so i can have these files and then like whenever i do get a printer up and run again i will have them 
and I never unsubscribed. Every month was just like awesome stuff after awesome stuff after awesome stuff. So I just kept it rolling and just kept like stacking up with uh, files. Yep. So that's where my big work came from that I printed there <clears throat> that I sent you on Instagram. Oh. Uh, the demon princey one. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's, he's a big lad. He's that's him at fifty percent scale. So I don't know what they were. <laughs> I don't know what they were smoking. Like I put, I didn't realize how big he was meant to be, until I put him on a build plate in the yeah, in the yeah. program, and I like clicked on like put his torso and head on. And I was like, what the hell is this warlord titan of an orc? <laughs> so I knocked him down to about fifty percent, thinking that was about one um, war boss size, and I'm still yep. off. He's gigantic. He's a demon prince wow. sized war boss of doom. That's crazy. And so if you, if you subscribe to these guys, do you only get what's there now going forward or do you yes. also do a background as well? Can you no. get everything they had before? Good God, no. You get what they, this month and every month moving forward as long as you continue to pay. Yeah, and of course. All of their previous files go on to, um, what the hell's that website called? They've got like an Etsy or something. There's a, yeah, there's a website that all 3D printing places go to. Uh, My Mini Factory, that goes onto their My yeah, Mini yeah, Factory yeah, yeah. Um, page and you can go buy the file. Not expensive, like if you like the look of that Creek squad had probably cost you five or six euros to get the files for it. Well, I'm going to have a look right now. So it's a, uh, you're laughing. Station Forge. Oh, wow. Yeah. So they've got a unit of three, four, five, six, seven, ten Krieg cavalry guys. Yeah. And the STL is $15. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They've got a Krieg guy. Well, Krieg style guy on uh, Commissar on horse, six dollars yep. for the STL. Probably cost you a quid to print them. Yep. Oi, oi, oi. Oi, oi, oi is right. Yeah. And I'm oh thinking my... about things that like grab people's attention. So, for instance, God, imagine if I, I had a that. thumbnail with that orc war boss yep. fighting something. Like, people are going to scroll around and be like, you know, battle report orcs V, and they'll be like, what the hell is that orc? They have what they call a scavenger gunship. Yes. Which is absolutely brilliant. You see the way it has two, like it's got a landed yeah. version on it. Yeah. yeah. But I've it's... been subscribed since before. That's why I have the files for that thing. That's brilliant. Because that's yeah. that's so good. That's a, that's a mix of the little Space Marine Flyer thing and the Mechanicum Walker. Yeah. Really, really good. Ah, oh, Andy. So I'm telling you, it only takes one file that you really want before you're like, okay, I'm a 3D printer now. Yep. Yeah. Politics. Yeah. One file will grab you and you're done. Oh my god. Yeah. So I've got um, there's just a couple of companies now that are reaching out and want to do like pay me to make content around their SDL files stuff. Mm. So I was done waiting for because like I was supposed to get a printer off of um, uh, Legu. Oh yeah. Um, but they're just kind of, it's not that it fell through. The lady just kept been like, we're waiting for um, creator ones to come back into the warehouse. It's obviously like stock set aside to be sent yeah, to yeah, creators. Yeah. And she was like, as soon as that comes back in, I'll get one sent out to you. And I was waiting and waiting. And I was just like, you know what? I can't wait anymore. There's just like, I can't accept the contract. And I was asking Tim to print them for me. Yeah. And he's the nicest guy in the world. So obviously he said yes, but I don't want to. Yeah, make of course. It's not polite to constantly like, here, print this, poke, dance, monkey. Yeah. Like, yeah, and it's also, it, there's a difference between you doing it and things going horribly wrong and you can make a video about that and Tim doing it and things going horribly wrong and you just kind of put somebody out that you like. Exactly. And I know, I know, I, I mean, you know, I know he's not going to complain about it, but also you don't want to. No, he shouldn't have to do it. And he like, no, I appreciate course. him doing it for that last yeah, one. Yeah, he yeah. The one for the, he printed the, um, the Votan robot thing. Mm. That was him that did that. And then when Arch Filling came back again, I was like, nope, order, boom, send to door, done. It was here two days later. Like, so. I, I, I have a stupid question just because I'm looking at these. Um, I don't know. I'm going I'm to call them Elegu or Iligu. Elegu, I, I think it's Elegu. Elegu, like the elegant goo. Um, is is a 2K printer really that bad? No. Like, it would, would, would you get away with 28mm model at 2K or should you always go 4K? I don't know what the what what um my any cubic photon. I wonder maybe if you Google that the original one. What resolution was that? Because that was the old one I had, and the prints that came out of that were majestic. 
nothing wrong with them whatsoever. Cubic photon. Let's have a go see. This was the original, the OG. <laughs> the one that's behind OG. me in my like. Uh, you see me streaming it sitting on my shelf. Uh, do, 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 doesn't really say. The only ones I can see right now are 4K ones. Yeah. But there's a um, like the Mars from yeah. Iligu. Uh, there's like a. I mean, they're super cheap, super duper cheap. Like they have them on Cyber their Monday sale. Well, it's on so it's on their website, so it's US dollars. So I assume they also do it for Europe, but like, to, like not like one hundred and nineteen dollars is what it's there for for the two K one, because obviously yeah. now they're they're pushing the four K and, and and bigger. Yeah, and I guess the real issue is the. Uh, plate size, right? Because you get yeah, very small. Bed, yeah. yeah, print bed is very small on those ones. Yeah. So, but it's funny. It's funny that you should say that because I was worried about that too when my first one came along. Then the one I just got is exactly the same as my first one. It's the smallest print bed that exists on a resin printer. Yeah. And companies do not want to exclude. Oh no, of course. Any print size. So, like, I've bought things before, and there's like, like, let's say it's a spaceship, the hull. Okay, let's take yeah. a hull. And you'll open up the files, you'll drag the hole into the, the print bed. It doesn't fit kind of thing. Yeah, of course. Well, they have files already built in that you download it to be like, oh, do you have a smaller printer? Oh Click my here. God, that's so good. And then there's three separate files. So the hole is now in three pieces and it'll fit on kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're, they're just ahead of it all, man. They know what's going on. Like there's nothing, what, no, they never want someone to click on something. They had like bought a file, put on, oh, I can't fit this shit. And then it's wasted. And then they get a bad taste for that company or whatever. It's just... So one of the big ones I want to get in with at some stage in the new year is one page rules. Okay. I like their stuff a lot. And they do a lot of like um, work with <laughs> creators. They do a lot of like um, sponsored videos and stuff. And yep. the whole idea is like that whole one page of rules to play a game. Yep. So I'd love to print off some stuff for me and Dave and play some of the one page rules game mechanics and see how one page of rules actually works. Because obviously it can be really stressful sometimes. Like even when we were playing Kill Team for the first time. Yes. It was like, okay, let's learn how to play Kill Team this morning and we're probably going to make a mess of it and the comments is going to explode by people going <laughs> like, you guys are so stupid. I'm like, we know. Um, but, yeah. We'll make it work. They've got some really interesting fantasy models. Which one are you looking at now? Uh, one Page Rules. Yeah. They have a Crute army. Oh, do they? But they're called Jackals. And they're all yeah, based yeah, off yeah. like hyena heads and stuff. Oh, nice. But I'm not mad on the jackal hyena aesthetic. I love, but the creature that they have for the yeah. jackals, like they've got this mammoth thing that, like, it's it's huge. Like, the, honestly, the thing I want to 3D printer for more than anything else is just to do D and D in yeah. person, like just to you know have everyone get their models because you can design your own models online, like, and then download the STL from a bunch of companies. Do yeah. that. Hero Forge does it. Yeah, Hero Forge. That's Hero right. Forge yeah, they're very good. Like you literally go onto their website and um, design it using all of their pieces, and then pay them like two fifty for the file. Yeah, and then like the next week, I could three D print some wolves, and the week after, I could three D print. You know, have have your your default things. Yeah, and that's why I have my Loot Studios one just running. Mm -hmm. I haven't printed a Loot Studios thing off in about eight months, I'd say. Yeah, but you have all I the have stuff it. that you yeah. And every month is like a different theme and they come with 5e rules and scenarios oh. and it's just so well put together. And you get like, it's really good as well because they like, they do seasons. Mm. So each month is like, you have the same three heroes, but each like month they're, they're, they're like different. They've gotten some more gear. I've gotten some upgraded or they've gotten a bit wounded or you know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, the yeah. characters are evolving with the story and it's just magnificent. Amazing. Well, we've talked about 3d printing again for ages. And uh... it'll happen. It'll happen. Okay, guys, that was episode 16 and the end of season one of the Mediocre Hobbies podcast. Just want to say a huge thank you to all of you people who have listened throughout the last four months of us rambling. And we are very excited to bring you episode two or season two in the new year um, with a bunch of exciting guests and see where that takes us. Uh, anything you want to say to the peeps, Mr. Landy, on the way out? 
no just please come back uh, actually <laughs> I, I really want to just end with um east enders dun 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 Nah, nah, nah. See, I'll make up the music because then they won't copyright it. I'll just make them, you know what I mean? Yeah, but you might you might get sued for um, <laughs> what you've nah, done to nah, the music. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> That's true. Um, Do I want to so... say anything? Uh, no, not really. Uh, thanks again. Thanks for listening. Thanks for sticking with us. Come back next year. We've got we've got lots of good stuff in in the works. And um, don't leave me alone with this, man. No, no, for sure. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe on all of our posts. Um, follow Mr. Landy on his new exciting uh, Instagram, which will be linked below. And you can find me on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Reddit, everywhere else, and just under the same name, Media Hobbies. So thank you guys so much for listening, and uh, I'll see you in the new year.